Hello everybody, it's your girl Miss Trina with Chat with Trina. September is Suicide Prevention Month. And tonight for Talk About It Tuesday, I have a very special guest, Devante Jerome, also known as Trill Alumni DJ. We're going to have some dialogue about depression and suicide prevention, uh, signs, and actually some of the stories that he and I both have heard about suicide and, you know, what we could do for our very small part of suicide prevention. Today, uh, this month is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And so we are going to be having some conversation about that today. Um, I also want to dedicate this show to my good friend. Um, well, let me not say that because I don't know if it's public. So it's a very good friend of mine that's a musician that had an incident last week um, with someone in his family. So I'm actually dedicating this to him, um, this, this conversation. So today I have Mr. Devontae Gilbert, but he has a whole nother name that I'm going to let him talk about because I can't remember all the names. <laughs> So, hey there, sir. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you. I appreciate you for reaching out. This is this is the honor. Yeah, and I saw you on uh, my friend, uh, my my worthless two cents, which his cents are always worth something more than two cents. <laughs> uh, but uh, Mr. Donnie, and he'll probably join us uh, once he finishes with his, finishes with his show today. Um, but tell me where you're from. Um, I'm from Austin, Texas. Uh, I currently am in Texas, but um, yeah, the majority of my life, Austin, Texas. Uh, spent some of the later years in Pflugerville and things like that. So I kind of had a, you know, um, a pretty good, solid foundation around people around me. So, you know. Right. The music city, the music capital. <laughs> Do you like loud music? Yes, ma'am. Actually, I, I love all different types of genres of music just oh, you are you a dj no ma'am i'm actually an artist myself uh, oh okay oh, where'd okay. you go to school at in austin um so the earlier years i was like on the east side of austin um middle Lugerville, um then like my senior year i went back so okay. uh school from ninth to the beginning of 12th, and then my 12th grade year, I went to LBJ, and then I moved to Houston. Well, you said your daughter's birthday's coming up. Yes, tomorrow. RH2. Yeah, that's my, that's the baby. And um, I have two older ones. Uh, my my first daughter, uh, Alea, she turns eight in December. And uh -huh. my he's a teenager. He's 14. You know, yeah, he's doing uh, his own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. He's, that's cool. How y'all enjoy being a father? It was, it's, it started off challenging. Um, mm -hmm. I think every day is a challenge, but because you're developing these people who are going to grow up and go into society and, you know, do all of these things. So it's important that I, I try not to, to miss anything, try not to miss yeah. anything, but I'm also trying not to be a, a preachy dad to the older one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they'll stay coming to you with stuff. Right. It, it's a difficult, it's, it's a difficult line. You know what I mean? Very true. Very that you true. have to be a parent, but you also don't want to be so much of a, uh, what you just said, so they won't come to you. So it's definitely a thin line. That'll be a safe space for sure. Even when they're, they're being disciplined, we can always talk about it. Yeah, exactly. And this is so off topic, but I just have to, well, it's kind of not off topic, but let me ask you, with you having a son, an African-American son, have you had to, been being 14, have you had the difficult conversation about um, the things that are going on in the world, you know, from George Floyd to all this other? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, anytime there's an opportunity like that, you know, of course, I want to um, gather all of my thoughts about it and not just speak out of emotion because, you know, um, emotions. Yeah. So um, anytime, you know, something happens, I give myself a, a well-rounded, you know, because I want to um, always have an objective. I don't want to just speak and, you know, just put fear. Um, wow. I based and yeah. any I don't want to just talk about the problems I'll rather really get to the solution at the end the solutions yes yeah. we open dialogue home yes ma'am yeah. I think that's the problem with especially in our culture um mm -hmm. you know I used to have type of pet peeve watching a lot of cultural movies even like our you know what people consider like hood classics and stuff mm -hmm. always address the problem through the whole movie and it leaves you with the question mark still at the end like so what do we do you know that growing up but i think that that days is one of those movies yeah school it wasn't days. a hood movie but at the end it was like 
like, and, and I'm and I'm guilty of that. Juice is one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh. At the end of the movie, he says, you know, you got the juice now. Now what? You know, <laughs> we. <it's> like, <laughs> what is what's his like after this? I always thought we needed a part two or something. Right, I exactly. I was like, like, so we we gonna we gonna do the next movie so we can figure this out. Right. What um, are we doing? <laughs> so let's get to our topic. Um, our topic is, of course, this month is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And um, yes. I actually took a few notes from another show that you were on that I thought was interesting. Um, checking on strong friends. Mm -hmm. I'm someone, I'm always laughing, always the life of the party, just everything. So no one really will check on me because they think, oh, she got it together. I mean, she got it. She good because she's still on this, on this chat with Trina running her mouth. Um, right. Talk to us about that, about checking on people that you might think have it all together. Um, I, I have a personal uh, experience with this because anybody who noticed, you know, I shared it on my stream as well. So I'm hoping that people who, who were there during these times, are actually, you know, they're it's starting to click to them. Um, a lot of times I've, I've definitely been known as like the class clown, you know, growing up. I was very entertaining um, because of the household I came from, you know, everybody in the house played, you know, the dozens on each other things like that. But that I think that was more of the uh, defense mechanism because um, I was still trying to find identity on who I was and things like that because my family, I come from a notorious family. Um, my grandfather who actually passed, uh, L.D. Washington, um, one of the biggest male influences in my life was like the iconic basketball, football coach throughout East Austin. Like he's, he's wow. very iconic. Um, and his stature out there, as well as like his son, who was my stepfather. Um, mm -hmm. and my, he's my stepson as well. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like down, um, which is he was, uh, you know, an all star athlete everywhere I went. They were like, Do you know who your dad is, you know, and then my mom's, you know, everybody um, knew my mom. And then my sister was kind of the same way. So growing up, it was almost like, even like my first day of middle school, uh, middle school teacher said, oh, we got another Gilbert in here. So it's kind of like, it's the pressure, like, of yes. who are you going to be? So um, I think I always tried to play towards people, try to use people's skills. I didn't know I was developing it at the time, but I would go to school feeling really bad. Like I would have depression. I didn't know, you know, what depression mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. It with myself alone, a lot at home trying to just figure out who it was. And that's where the music came as well, like writing down my thoughts. My mom was very um, into telling me as a black man in the world to be able to, because that's what really is going on with the cops and stuff like that. We are, we, we're such an emotional people that um, we respond out of our emotions. So I always never wanted to act out of emotion. I always wanted to seem calculated, but with doing that, I wasn't honest with myself and the people around me. Um, so with that, a lot of times I go to school and be, you know, trying to cheer somebody up when I feel the lowest in the class or trying to make everybody else laugh when um, my stepdad just got arrested last night and I got been up all night and cops outside my house until, you know, whatever time. So it was a lot of masking, you know, and no, and everybody just assumed, you know, well, you know, he good, you know, he, you know, you just go talk to him. He good. So everybody would, I became, um, the uh the holder of a lot of people's problems and I never got into a yeah, until I was 25 plus to where I can actually talk about you know I had a bad day today you know <laughs> that's that's when I feel comfortable because yeah. no one sees that I I've seen the quotes and everything and I posted them and then in me really um I, I've had some awful times and ever so often someone will notice something I may say on Facebook or something like that and they may just reach out every so often but back while back no one did and so i always tell people you know check on those same people that's out here laughing and having a good time and you know check on them during the week after yeah. after all of the fun and all the people are out of the way those mm -hmm. are the people that you really need to check on right right i personally agree we we don't do it enough because um and my mom actually told me uh mm -hmm. whenever the depression little moments for me actually started when i became a father and mm -hmm. she said well, one of the things I taught you is closed mouths don't get fed. I mean, you got to speak up, you know, so nobody can read your mind. And um, that made it like to where I start kind of testing it. Like, okay, can I say that, you know, I'm comfortable with this or I don't like this. Right. But a lot of the time, you, you know, when you grow up, you know, old habits die hard, you right. know, so very long Especially time. for men. Ex exactly. Because, you know, the first time a man hears, oh, you need to toughen up. 
then that's we go right back to it like okay you know what that was you know it's mm-hmm. it's a red flag like oh we, we shouldn't do that like that's dangerous to tell people how you feel pouring yeah. in other people yeah. you talked about that mm-hmm. let's, let's talk about that a little bit um pouring to other people just positivity you know and i think that came easy to me because like i said you know i i was always more concerned with other people feelings because for some reason um the, when I mention the strong people we minimize how we feel but um for other people I think the um the key is to to always try to bring um more life in the individuals you know mm-hmm. just come with gossip don't come with the negative because you don't know what someone was already dealing with before you called them or before you approach them. so are we gonna keep you know, pile and negativity, you know, because the, the tongue is, is is very powerful. Oh, yes, it is. So if, if you, if someone's dealing with something, you come up to them with more negativity, you're reinforcing however they feeling or you're um just feeding into them something negative. So when I say we pouring into people, be careful what you pour into people. I think, I mean, I, I believe, honestly, we're getting better as a culture about it, you mm-hmm. know, which is the good and bad with the cancel culture thing that's going on. It's a oh, lot. I know. Of- I don't like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I believe they started with good intentions, but yeah. as it develops power and it, and it's not, um, it has nothing policing it. Yeah. It starts to take, it becomes the oppressor, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely I, I agree with saying being intentional with your words, you know? Um, I don't think anyone, they're meeting any malice by it. I, I get I've, I've definitely, I've, as much as I can sit here and say that I've dealt with my stuff, I know that I was very um, loose with, with, with words, you know, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. when you're trying to be entertaining, you know, I've yeah. always, I mean, you know, I looked up to a lot of comedians, so I'm going to, I used to say the first thing that came to my mind, not yeah. think, I didn't think the words were um, as powerful until I started, you know, dealing with it myself. Yeah. Comedians suffer with depression more than anybody i don't know the numbers but right. i've read that we just lost a comedian um the other day um he was a writer for uh, a show called big i forgot his name i don't know i would just somebody is just, it andre no not andre I'm talking about the, the light skin guy I, i'm not exactly sure the cause okay okay but um it was another guy he was a, he's about my age so I, um, uh-huh. jackson i'm sorry yeah but That's okay um, I believe he took his own life and yeah and uh you know I do my, my profession right now I drive you know trucks so I'm on a truck a long uh-huh. period of books and I do like stories from comedians I've listened to Bernie Mac Kevin yeah. Hart e. Fox all of them have very depressing origins and I and uh-huh. I come here that the funniest people to us are the saddest people right it, right it, it, it's really depressing. Like I thought about Bur- Bernie Mac's story needs to be told a little bit more throughout. It's 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 really like it's on well, Audible. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's called so so maybe you'll never cry again. He was okay. talking okay. to his mother, but it was like very very rough stories for right. who are so funny and so entertaining. And but that's how they get their love. Mm-hmm. It putting something out and seeing the autumn uh the the immediate tragedy. yes. So it makes sense on why they chose that profession, but it's 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 very it's very uh, deep when you get into their personal life, for sure. Okay, I'm an Audible fan too, and I um I've listened to some very uh what is uh, Viola Davis say like she had a rough oh my god her life was so you know rough and it's like um it, it's just be unbelievable how these people have um have made it through, if you will, you know? Persevere through it, right. Persevere, that's the word I'm looking for, yeah. It's, it's, uh. it's, it's astonishing, it, and it's also inspirational. I think that's why I continue to listen to those people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You think you have problems until you listen to somebody else's sometimes, so. Absolutely. That's next on my list. I have a list of books I'm trying to get through. Every year I try to read one more book than I did the previous year. The previous year? year? This year I'm on like 26, so I got, I got my... <laughs> I'm That's probably something. right with you. I, I actually got audible for my dad because he's um his memory loss is his losing his memory. And so the doctor said, you know, if he would read or listen, it would help him focus more. But anyway, he wouldn't do it. So I took the audible stuff back and I have been a fan. Right yeah, now I'm, I'm listening to I just finished um 
Oh gosh, Lewis, Jennifer Lewis. She oh, just from Blackish. I, I, I just listened to both of her books. That is the most. She's the best storyteller. She had to have memorized that book. I, I, but anyway, <laughs> so she talks about her bipolar. She was um um had had a diagnosis of bipolar, but she was almost in her thirties when she did. She had no idea. Um, uh, but even though she's not a comedian, she's actually a comedian. You know, she's so. Very very pop. Like, I love her. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. I hope to be like that when I get up to her. It. And when she reads her book, she huh. sounds just like that. <laughs> like, just like that. It's so I've crazy. had people, um, when I started opening up about being, having suffering with depression, anxiety, I've had people say things like, well, everybody's depressed. Do you know the difference? Or if you had someone tell you that, how would you tell them the difference in that? The difference, um, I'm, I'm not medically advised. Oh, right, right, right. But, but don't I, we just talking this our conversation about how if someone said that to you, what would you say back? Let's say that. My my opinion is um the difference between depression and being just down is um mm -hmm. is when you can't climb out of it. You know, I've had some I was down, down and could mm -hmm. pull my of it. But then I had moments still, no matter what anyone said or what anyone did around me who tried to, um, you know, do a little jump start with it, mm -hmm. it for me. Because um, I think that I was, if I did have a down moment previously, it would be really easy to tell a joke and be like, man, you know, and then I'll be like, All right, you know, get it. Especially when you're younger and you don't have anything yeah. going on. Yeah. Depression is, um, it's clinical and it's, and it's hereditary in our, um, you know, in our yeah. community. Definitely. Um, you just can't see your way out of it. I think that's what I would classify as depression. Mm -hmm. I would see that too. That I mean, I've had moments where I just want to be under my covers. Like, yeah. I don't want nobody to call me. I want to talk. To, I just want to be under my covers in my moments. You know, <laughs> I suppose about this one. When we're checking on people, you know, everybody likes the texting thing. And my thought is, I don't know who the comedian was. It was a comedian. Was it George Lopez? George, mm -hmm. Lo oh, oh, it wasn't George Lopez. Michael Strahan. Mm -hmm. I don't know who the other person was, but the person, it was the guy, white guy, but he was on the show and he said that he was really depressed. Something was wrong. He couldn't come out of it. And Michael Strahan called him. Mm -hmm. Not text everybody, but make sure y'all understood that. He, he, picked, he literally picked up the phone and dialed a number. Right, right. <laughs> and, he, and he answered and he said that moment saved his life. Mm. To hear the voice on the other end, a caring, strong voice saying, hey, how you doing, man? It stopped him from maybe going over the edge. Right. What do you think about that? Do you think the voice of people helps more than, so than just hearing a, hey, how you doing over the... That's, that, that, I guess it's a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, if somebody's that far gone, mm -hmm. sometimes the phone call is not enough. Sometimes you, enough. Uh, your appearance is mm -hmm. is. is mm -hmm. um, um, I think with this younger generation, um, that's their form of communication that they understand. Okay, you, that's in, fair. A universal thing, I think, is you know to embrace people. You know, um, it, as men, we have to do better with that. People, you know, men, we're not secure, you know, as, as much as we would like to think we progress. Mm -hmm. I don't giving somebody a hug, like, dog, like, you, what's up? You know, but um, I think that, uh, yeah, phone calls definitely, you know, I think that's that extra effort. I think that it's, you, you notice it. It's apparent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pop up after you've already expressed your disinterest, your dissatisfaction about how your life is, and somebody calling you and and you hearing that person in the sincerity into it, that can definitely, mm -hmm. you know, help. But I think that it's, it may be a case by case basis. Some people, yeah. um, if you call them after they, after they, you know, after they know that you know that they're going to do something, they might get more upset. True. You know, they might want to read, read, you know, if you text it, they might want to read that when they want to read that. So I, but I think that I that's why that. that's fair. Right. Right. It's tricky. It, it's tricky because I know, you know, it's people I try to call all the time. And there, you know, um, that might irritate versus yeah. them. Especially if someone is not a phone person. 
Right. And, you know, if they read something, they could, you know, they start taking those breaths in between it, you know, and that might be, you know, seeing those words might be more effective. So I, I think it might be a case by case. It's, it's tricky. Okay. Well, that helped me. That helps me because I fuss a lot about them text messages. But says, why do you think men are more depressed than women? Hmm. Um, by the way, that's my mom. <laughs> I figured that. I wasn't sure. I went on you to tell me that. I'll be I was about to answer, but I'm not gonna front. I'm not gonna sit here and act with that's my <laughs> I figured that's what it was, but right. Um, I think the reason why and me and her have these type of conversations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes um men, like how we talked about earlier, I think they don't they don't feel comfortable with talking about emotions. I think that that us as a culture have done we came up with strange rules about like unwritten rules that when you think about it it's silly it's 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 more than silly it's it's, mm -hmm. ignorant. Yeah, it's yeah. harmful um but i think that a lot of men just look at at vulnerability as a sign of weakness which it is but when you think about it you need that weakness to show how strong you are you know like how you need fear to show how brave you are mm -hmm. i think this but um, yeah, I think that men men just don't feel comfortable saying anything because especially to whom they say it to, they feel like it may change how that person, you know, that relationship, how that flips after they're vulnerable. Right. Um, you know, because I, you know, a lot of women, they want, they, especially if it's like a couple, you know, mm -hmm. you, you weakness coming from your significant other when you feel stronger than he does about that topic, which, you know, I think that every woman wants to feel security, mm -hmm. but that they need to know that this is a team effort you know they they want he may you might be the only person in life he's ever came to about anything vulnerable his mom didn't grandma didn't accept it he's coming to you so just like how we talk, that's special right it's, it's 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 a it's an opportunity you know to to gain that person's um unconditional love right um i think it makes me think about too when we talk about this as just as a whole about not being able to express ourselves is that, you know, even with church, uh, well, families would always say, you only can go to the church. You can only go to the priest. You can't tell your stuff outside of the church. So that's right. another thing I think keeps people from putting yeah. information out. Yeah, Re religion's a funny one. Um, it's funny. Yeah, I, it's <laughs> it's because you're gonna offend somebody. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, people, people being depressed and feeling like they have no way out and have no one to turn to, how do we miss the signs of depression? How we miss a, or the family that likes to misdiagnose it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that happens a lot. That's interesting that you back to back that one because that's that's really what it stems from. I can't speak about a lot of other communities because I haven't spoken to them about yeah. it. You know? yeah. In our community, you know, you, you just said, boy, take it to Jesus. That's, that's our thing our that's our community that's our history mm -hmm. you're not depressed go pray about it you know and right. it's which which is true you know if you have a connection with the higher you definitely need to consult with your father your heavenly father you know Allah there's a, mm -hmm. a bunch across the countries but um even I, I believe now if you you look at most um educated religious leaders they're recommending therapy they're recommending things like that because that aren't we aren't we the body of god you know aren't we supposed to be communicating with one another isn't yeah. that so i think that to say just to tell somebody to wait maybe you're the person that was that was delivered from god to to make that message to right how do we as men create a safe place for each other to y'all thank you for these wonderful questions but how do we as men create a safe place for each other to share to be open and transparent i will i would i would love to think that my answer is universal but mm -hmm. um but i know that there's not a lot of people who think like me yeah. uh, like everyone else uh mm -hmm. but um a lot of people believe in like men groups and things like that and um prayer groups you know mm -hmm. back to the thing but i think that um just thing you know in business they tell you you need a strong core mm -hmm. you know if, you, if you're gonna go into something have people around that you can trust so i think that we just have to uh 
we have to pick people in our life intentionally. You yeah. know, you pick people to be your friend. You know, is that the friend who's going to be the person, you know, out of all those people who you're going out with, going to the club mm-hmm. with, one of those people, somebody you can say, man, I'm, I'm just not, I'm yeah. not, it. you know, yeah. and I, I have my sports friends. I got friends who I do music with. And then yeah. I got to talk to about business and, you know, and some of those friends intertwine. And then they usually identify themselves with outside of this said, um, you know, activity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking to you, you know, how's your family? How you kid? How you doing? Yeah. We miss that. We, we're not paying yeah. attention. We're tongue in yeah. cheek. Definitely. We, definitely take those people up on just conversation you know conversing it's really weird to have childhood friends you know I, 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 it sure I, is I, I've, I've been lucky to keep I, uh one of my brothers around um and it's it's interesting because we go through these different phases where our lives are completely different you know but i think focus you know and we both doing music as well i think that's uh-huh. what drama is but um Sometimes I have to tell him. Sometimes he has to be real with me about something that I didn't think he was. I thought he was gonna be on my side. And he was like, right. "Look, I know you. You know, mm-hmm. so did that. I mean, you, you didn't handle that correctly. You know, based off of what you're trying to do and who you used to be, don't ruin where you're trying to go. Based off of you, that's always been your problem. Like he'll tell me, and I mm-hmm. think that we have to hold each other accountable. accountable. And and especially, and I keep going back to our community. Mm-hmm. We are so. Um, emotional as people and um and some and that's what creates some of our best things that we put into the world we're emotional about emotional about arts and stuff like that but we can't be emotional about the truth yeah definitely we can't you know we look we look silly so if somebody confronts you and tells you the truth you have to be like okay listen you know the source i always look at who the source is okay yeah you know a lot to me what they're saying and how they're saying it okay then maybe i need to check it Mm -hmm. and maybe bothering me because it is truth to it Right, right. I I definitely agree. Okay, again, I read something. I don't know where it was. <laughs> Someone said that today about us being better with making each other accountable. You know, mm-hmm. um, not just saying, "Oh, that's how so and so is," or having that friend that. And, and I like to have a friend that will call me out because I ain't gonna lie. I am somebody that used to think I was always right, but mm-hmm. I learned, um, you know, that I have a few friends that will be like, "Girl, that is not it." You know, you you said that the wrong way. I know you didn't mean this, but this is what you said and how you said, it, and it wasn't cool. Right, right. And that's very important. That's important in every, you, you need those people. I, I, yeah. I was people who grew up believing that friends were as important. You know, I thought they were, you know, fly by the wind, but you need those people that's going to check in. It might be your family. It might not even be friends. It might be somebody. Yeah. And they want to you. Do you find it difficult to talk about mental and emotional issues with, with women mm. for you and for me with men? Okay. Did, did you want to go first? Or I'll go first. Um, absolutely. <laughs> Especially if you're someone who's looking to date. I have posted some things on Facebook and think about it later. Like, dang, I ain't gonna never get no man. Cause they go, <laughs> so, you know, cause I'm posing the truth, but I'm um, not saying I put nothing out there that is, that's not true or anything like that, but I talk about it. Or I may see posts that I like that I think will bring attention to what's going on in the world about mental health. But I do sometimes think I can't tell this person, this man, that I suffer with anxiety and depression because they won't understand, most won't, I mean, I have to say that. I don't think that they're going to understand. I think that they're going to judge me uh, from the person that they don't really know yet, but they've seen out and about in the world, but now they find out, "Mm, she said anxiety and depression, Uh uh-oh, you know. And you said it, you know, it's it's what we think most of the time. I think we... Especially if you're dealing with something, it's difficult to know or to understand what somebody may think, but I'd rather you know it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we can, you know, if we continue from there, then let it be. But if it pops out years later, then that might be, you know. Oh, then, yeah, that could be a trigger. Right. Then I'm dishonest about who I am and what I'm going through. Yeah, so I yeah. always take try to take accountability on that part. But as far as I'm... Um, Difficulty for men, I don't think when men hear someone articulate how they feel that they're taken back by it. Like with me, with, with, that's just me, like speaking mm-hmm. to what I can understand a woman talking to other men, mm-hmm. you know, and men be like, you know, me too, but they don't want to say it. All right. <laughs> you know, they, they don't want to say it yet, especially if they just meet. They don't want um, to hear what you say first. 
Right. They they'll let you say it and they'll be like, <laughs> like when you said they probably just whew. but um but with women, I think I've always felt um comfortable with women because I was raised around other more women. Mm-hmm. And I women love great conversation and yeah. uh men are very um I, I would say we're we're more practical with okay, we ain't gonna talk about it that long because you know, <laughs> you know, we get all sensitive here, yeah, you know. That, yeah, yeah. We, and we're more solution based. Everything about man is okay. I gotta fix it. You know, what do I do to fix this? Um, but women, I, I think they take the necessary, um, you know, the necessary conversation. They let themselves feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if men necessarily have the license to feel. If that's the conversation, mm-hmm. okay. men are one hundred percent trustworthy of that notion that I can say how I feel and yeah. you. Go me uh but Definitely. women right but that's why women live longer than men in most cases because mm-hmm. women being held down by five-year-old trauma you know mm-hmm. most mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's killing them you know and that's why that's what really made me take this this approach to everything that's going on is because i'm not gonna let um something that happened or some some misconception kill my you know um, just everybody it's called uh, forgiving what you can't forget i just joined a book club it's gonna be hard to read again after i'm listening to audible but Western. forgiving what you can't forget discover how to move on make peace with painful memories and create a life that's beautiful again um mm. so it's a book club that just started i thought that was a when you said that it was interesting to me um you might have to send that to me. I didn't get this. I didn't get the screenshot. But yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll send. I'll, I'll text it to People you. People do go through in silence. I guess it's kind of that's kind of what we're already talking about going through in silence and handling things in silence. Um, I was told I have a friend. He was a friend. He he killed himself about ooh, two years ago. Um, he was a promoter. Very happy guy. Cool. Right. You know, never think anything wrong with him. I can't call his name right now. Um, which is sad. Um. But he went to Puerto Rico mm. on like a Wednesday. Had all his pictures, showing all his pictures, had a good time. And on Monday, he had killed himself. Mm. And I was confused because I was like, he was having a good life. He went to Puerto Rico with his girlfriend, had a good time. Well, a therapist told me that sometimes that is a, um, that's a sign. Right. Because yeah. they know what they're planning to do. Right. I can see that. So they're having a good time doing all that because they know that that's the plan. Right. Yeah. I've I've seen I've seen that and heard that on a couple of days. I think um, Kevin Gates mentioned it one time. Mm-hmm. He, had, he said he was going to work out and he put on all his jewelry and he was going to, you know, but he was interrupted by a fan who kind of, you know, mm. um, I've heard um, the young lady that he and um, uh, the gentleman, uh, country one. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, he was mentioned we were discussing she went to a bridge made four text messages said it's so beautiful up here i've seen situations where it's premeditated they wanted they want the memory of or their last 24 hours to be of man see this is how it could have been yeah. you know and yeah. i think that's 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 what i think the most disturbing thing about a lot of these situations for me because it's like if we if we could only, um, I'm going to put it like this, and, I, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to make it shorter. Um, All right. Always asked me since the moment I was a child, if you had a superpower, you know, you were your friends, if you had a superpower, what would it be? I would want to read everybody's minds because you're walking by people who are having the most sporadic thoughts and they look completely normal. And that always bothered me because I, I watch videos of um, mass shooters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, he looks very normal. You know, yes. the right bomb and not thought, oh, this dude is about to go do what he's about to do. So it's really interesting what your mind can lead you to do, even when your physical doesn't get that, that. You know, yeah. that. So, yeah, that's that's really, um, I, yeah. I've seen it. And I think whenever I became, became like depressed, one, it was one birthday. I can't remember what birthday it was, but I said, I don't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. And everybody, what do you mean you know because i would know it was like 2021 so one of those everybody was you know <laughs> doing something you're supposed like, to do something one of those years that year 
sit here and kind of reflect today because I was one of those people, you know, who I did not believe that I would see 21. Mm. I, I don't know what my obsession or my infatuated, mm. my infatuated, yeah, but I was like, I feel like if I go out tonight, something's going to happen too, you know, because mm. I was like, let me, I just want to sit here, you know, and kind of, um, yeah, for the first time. I see that. When did you find out you had depression, that you were depressed or? Yeah, I don't think I'll use the word. Mm -hmm. I knew as a kid, I had depressing thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, I feel comfortable um, with dark theme things. You know, I felt yeah. I was one of them people who could sit in the room and you know, somebody tell me and be like, oh, I thought you were asleep. Like, no, just, I'm sitting here like I, and I'm, I'm I'm admittedly used to be uh, in, not empowered, uh, imprisoned by my own thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In in a thought for a very long time, admitted wow. happened. You know, I can't, I couldn't shake it off as quick as everybody else could, and that really made me jealous when people could. If somebody died um, close in our family. Everybody else can be like, oh, you know, they wouldn't have wanted that, and I, yeah. you, know, I was, you know, so yeah. So I, yeah always the optimistic like go in the wrong direction person mm -hmm. so that's how I started off as like a um a child but I think that once I um I can't really trigger a point because I think I've always had these thoughts but it would have to be around that same age the 20 21 yeah yeah looking around and I'm like I don't think that this it feels out of body you know I felt uncomfortable on skin mm -hmm. like you know, I had ins bad insomnia in like fourth grade. They tried to give me adult pills to go to sleep. I could yeah. stay up entire night and go to school. Yeah, no and function. Right. I didn't have any peace, like any inner yeah. peace on um, meditation that same year. And I think that was like literally God throwing me a lifeline, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I, I figure it out. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. I would go to work, come home tired as a dog, couldn't go to sleep, you know? Wow. That is yeah. miserable. That's the most miserable feeling in the world. It's very, and you can't point to nothing. You know, if you could be like, I, okay, I know why I can't go to sleep, but you can't you pick can't it up. Think. It's very disturbing. It is very, yeah. I, I have, a, I've even bought some, <laughs> I bought some, um, what do you call it, lavender? Did you supposed to spray on your oh, yeah. pillow? That's supposed to help you? And I had the tea. <laughs> um, it was, Matter of fact, one of my students today, when I walked out of the office to leave, he looked like, I don't know if you remember the dog, uh, Droopy the dog, and his, his, <laughs> his eyes was like that. Like he had only, I was like, what is wrong with you? And he was telling me he hadn't been able to sleep. So he's like, well, I've been taking melatonin. I said, well, you can't do too much melatonin because it will flip. It will do the reverse on you. You look, you got to do something. <laughs> so. That's what it is. Like if I, if I, with me, it's like, if I drink coffee now, uh -huh. I, because I drunk so much trying to stay up. So now I can't drink coffee later now. I'm going straight. Yeah. 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 Uh, side effects for sure. Definitely. And, it, and I'm glad to hear somebody say that though, because I swear it's like when you can't go to sleep, like I'm sleepy. Right. It ain't coming. <laughs> oh, it sleeping. is not coming. I'm tired. Why can't I fall asleep right now? Yeah. It's, it's Turn off all the lights. That'll help. <laughs> So you turn it back on. What happened to this young lady that you and Donnie were talking about? Um, so um, I'm really into to fitness um, stuff like that. Like I'm trying to, I'm really about other people's fitness and big, you know. So I try to follow a whole bunch of like athletic people on social media. If I'm on social media, I want to get up, see people like, oh man, okay, yeah, you're right. Okay. Like so motivation. That, right. That was a young lady. Um, her name was Raven K. Jackson. So. Um, Whenever me and uh, my wife would go, I'm like, you need to look at this real quick, you know, I'm gonna go look at this dude because I'm trying to, you know, so, um, um, and she went by Big Ray and she was dating um, this this rapper um, from Chicago named 600 Breezy. So I kind of like found them around the same time, but I didn't know they, they were uh, an item. But yeah. um, uh, basically she was like the most like bubbly individual. Mm -hmm. and it was like, you know, every time, if you go to any of her like videos and she working out, she smiles, she motivating everybody else. She's slapping on back. Let's go. You know, yeah. when I woke up and it was just like Reverend K. Jackson, I'm like, whoa, like what happened? Like, and then when I seen the suicide thing, I was 
confused. Wow. Like, yeah, I was like, nah, like it had to be like something had to happen. And they was like, no, nah, there was this. And then the more I read, the more like bothered I got. So mm-hmm. if you see the TikTok video about it, um, and it was like right after reading, and I was just like, mm-hmm. it, it disturbed me for me because I don't, you know, and it and I, it probably hit me because of everything that I said earlier about my childhood. Right, I, right. I was just like, man, like. So as I'm, you can see it on my face, it's kind of like registering and like, okay, I can, I can see it. And I, and you know, and the more I talk, you know, the more I spoke about it, the more it was kind of like talking to your younger self, like, man, because yeah. taking on everybody's stuff and then you become, so it's like registering to me. And then that's when um Donnie reached out to me right. and man, like you, you know, you, you changed how I thought about this. Mm-hmm. So I'm I still have to go back and watch that video. Do you, is it still yeah. out there? Yeah. Um, are you talking about mine or, or with Donnie? Uh, yours. Oh, yes, ma'am. It's on my uh, TikTok. It's okay. Trilla. Okay. I would spell right there. It's on all my social media. Okay. From... Yeah, so I was just like really caught off guard, but I, yeah. I understood that that caliber of person, mm-hmm. maybe she was too happy. That was the question I didn't want to ask. Like, well, maybe she's, you know, you know what that feel like. That's how I was telling myself, like, oh, man, like, so basically that was the young lady who i mentioned who um who allegedly wrote a text message saying that you know the you know that this these people look like ants from up here and you know mm-hmm. know that today was the day I, I was real quiet today like she it was a very thought out process wow it, it wasn't somebody just made me upset i'm gonna go do this about myself it was mm-hmm. this city to go to this building to sit here for this amount of time to write you to do that you wow, know, I was yeah. It was very, it was very interesting. Maybe because I have two young daughters, well, and they're very bubbly. I always want to make, and it just reinforces what I said earlier about uh, talking to them and having oh, an open. Man. Definitely have you know, if even if I don't agree, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and tell you, you know, if you just need someone to speak to, so I can say, okay, I see what you mean here. Okay, yeah. I see, you, you know. Yeah. Which I think when you say that too, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh. I think about men. Uh, Donnie asked a question. Uh, do you think that men have a harder time admitting they had a, had past trauma or facing it? Absolutely, I do, because it's kind of what we've been talking about. But do you have a, a and I know you say you have uh, certain friends that do certain things, but are there the ones that you do say, hey, man, let's stick together. If you need me, I need you. Do you have friends that know that? I try to, you know, but let me say I try to. I mm-hmm. try to, you know, um, that, that I'm, I'm here to listen anytime, you know, because I, I feel, I feel called to do this because I felt like, when, especially when I recognized what I was going through, yeah. it kind of be like, oh, snap, he looked like he might be, hey, man, you, you good? You know, like, what's wrong? It, it makes you, like, you know, have that human moment because we're yeah. just, going. today, we're just going, we're not paying, we'll walk right past somebody who has a shirt on that says, I'm about to end this today. Like, we'll walk right by that person. Okay. And, mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I just think that I, I try my best to, you know, reinforce that family thing because a lot of people don't have family. A lot of people can't talk to their family. A lot of people, family are saying, you know, what we said earlier, you need to yeah. go pray. Yeah. Don't to me, bring it to God, you know. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so I just think that I try to, you know, if I see something a little off, uh, I'll, I'll say speak. see something, say something almost. Absolutely. I, I can't give everybody this um thing that my mom gave me because that's mm-hmm. how my mom right? you close mouth don't get fed you know you better speak up i know that a lot of people are what donnie was saying especially men and it's um and based off of their past it's attempts to try to tell somebody it lessens even if you can you could beg and bro please or uh, look girl please tell me what's wrong based wow. off experience with trying to vent to somebody it makes them more uh or it has that wall put built up even more the last thing i want to mention is signs you know like I think um I just took a class I forget what it's called some course I just took at work it's called QRP some fancy name they had for it, but it was suicide prevention I sometimes people I've seen people post things on Facebook and I post things about mental health just because I'm trying to help bring awareness you know and there are times I will be very transparent there are times I'm probably posting because it's what I'm feeling it's not all the time, but sometimes it's just something I read. I think, okay, people need to hear. But oftentimes, if I'm um, going through something, I may see a post and I post it. 
Um, but what I was going to say is that I've also seen people get on and almost pour their heart, heart out yeah. or either on a live or just typing. And right. then I'll pe hear people say things like, oh, so-and-so just trying to get attention or, oh, you know. And my belief is that even if they are, mm -hmm. we need to check in on that person. You know what right. I mean? What, what if they are trying to get attention? Right. They that's, may need that. Maybe, maybe that's the only way they haven't tried. Maybe they maybe they try with family and call people personally. So social media was their last attempt, you know, yeah. in that. It's crazy to watch that because I've seen that a bunch of times, especially like in high school and stuff like that. That would be their last thing. And everybody like, oh, you just trying to. And then when they do it, it's, oh, man, well, I didn't know. How you didn't know? He just told you. You know, like, he just said. A long story, yeah. Wasn't you guessing this is them actually. So if you are close with people who do that, two seconds to text somebody, hey, man, call me right now, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or hey, to talk you know and really because you, you don't know because i don't like living with regret mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my kids would tell you i could get through yelling at them y'all you need to do this and y'all can't do that and i'm dropping them by school i already love you hey make sure you yeah. have good i'm not about to leave the last thing i say to you is something that if something happened to you there i gotta deal with that i gotta deal with the last word mm -hmm. i i can't i can't deal with that and especially yeah. when I, I know i can't you know so I always make sure that your impression on somebody is, I mean, unless somebody with children or, or, or some women out here, it needs to be positive encounters. I walk past other working men. How you doing today, brother? Don't work too hard. Mm -hmm, you don't mm -hmm. person, you know, you, you don't know how far that just, you know, that's the first person who told them that today, you know, so yeah. I don't know. And we just have to be nice be, just because. You know, yeah, just because, just because. Um, and even thinking about, um, I used to post sometimes, well, I used to do a block blast or something that's tell people, I would always say, remember, remember, this may be the last time. Remember, this may be the last thing that you said to somebody. It was something like that. But because I wanted people to start thinking about how you ended a conversation with them. Is it that big a deal that you're, you know, it's okay to argue, not agree, but don't mm -hmm. let that be the end of it, you right. know? Because um, it life is so short now and things are happening like every day, especially, of course, during, since the pandemic. Yes, mm. there was mental health before, but it seems like once the pandemic came, right. it was just, you know. Of course, people to sit with their own thoughts. That's the first time some people had to do it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Where you and you realize you didn't like you that much. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what it was like. Man, this is how I am. Oh, this is how she is. Oh, this is how my kid, this is my life. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. My daughter always teases and says, Oh, yes, yeah, see there, y'all in that house with that man or that woman. And y'all find you ain't like your husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I, I seen it. I seen it first. Yeah. Crazy. Um, but that's let you know what type of relationship did you have, you know, in that communication. I, I'd say it's everything, you know, especially when people yes. have to learn at a young age even when they got in trouble they would get disciplined with chores or having to do something and i'm like hey so why did why did i make you do that oh. do you think was do you think that what you did with spirit did it warrant whatever i did okay mm -hmm. we could talk about it or they'll tell me no i don't think that was fair why don't you think it? so we could talk about it it's an that's average good. that's good dialogue i like right. that um, my kids are now that they're grown up now they're telling me everything i did wrong but no <laughs> Yeah. But I'll just say this, since you have kids, when my daughter went to college, my oldest daughter went to college, I was like, you know, whatever. She called me one day and she was like, I just want to thank you. And I was mm -hmm. like, what I did, what I did. I was like, what, what's going on, Jazz? And she says, I want to thank, because she hated doing the dishes. I just want to thank you for nagging me all those years about washing dishes. I was like, why? These people don't know how to do nothing. They can't wash dishes. They can't. And all I could do, everybody got off the phone, was like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know? Beauty and it's beauty and struggling. I just told my kids that the other day. Both of them are uh, my, my my middle child. She's a cheerleading. Son, he's playing football. And I just told them stairs and do push ups. And they were like, what do we do? I'm like, don't worry about it. Just, just come down here and do what they They thought they were in trouble. They're like, I didn't even do it. And I was just like, now how y'all feel? And he was just like, you know, he, he in the mirror. You know? <laughs> 
no, I can do that many. I said, yeah, the beauty is on the side, other side of the struggle. Yeah. Get past that to know that you can do it. Do y'all feel we as a society have to be so self-absorbed that we are numb to what's going on with around with others around us? We should be. We should be. I think that we're all trying to be, everybody's trying to be a celebrity. Everybody's trying to be somebody mm -hmm. that we're not being, we're not checking on people. That's that's the overall thing. We're not talking. We're really putting you know, our conversations are scripted. You ever went to somebody and somebody asked you, how you doing? He's like, oh, I'm good, but you're mm -hmm. terrible. What would I tell you if I wasn't good? What, what would you say differently today? You know, it that, would be awkward because I did that one time. Somebody asked me, I, mean, I asked somebody and they were like, oh, her name was Miss Cherry. And I said, hey, Miss Cherry, how you doing? She started mm -hmm. telling me what was really wrong. We were like, oh, oh, so we're doing this. We're, we're doing I this. I was really like, huh? <laughs> I had no idea of how right. to react to that. Right. I was just asking you how you were doing. I just meant for you to say I'm fine. So, right. now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right. Our conversations are just like that. We, we, ask, we ask things that we might not even want the answer really to. We want to know the answer to. <laughs> you know, like, oh. but we do need to ask, but we also need to listen. Mm. Instead of just flying by people, oh, how you doing? We might need to just stop a second and just hear because, right. um, and then watch the signs. If you don't, if you agree with me, watch some signs, especially friends, people that you're close to and you know who they are. Um, whether you know they already have some type of mental issue, depression, anxiety, whatever it may be. But even if you don't know, watch the signs that something could be wrong, whether it's a Facebook post something you don't have to go into detail hey i saw what you posted you could just say hey i just want to check in and see how you're doing yeah that could save a life absolutely just just texting them and be like hey man you've been you've been killing it out here you you yes. we, I, you yes. know like day yes. sending them for a joke or something hey man i thought you'd think this is funny yeah 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 and you just never know i um every morning i send out a positive quote and someone asked me one time well, you well you ain't happy today or you whatever it was they say you I said well I don't send it for me I send mm -hmm. it for others who may not be doing great that day so that's what I send it for and I've gotten a lot of feedback from people just just sometimes out in the world where somebody may say you know I saw this post you posted one morning I wasn't feeling good it was perfect so it's mm -hmm. just nothing wrong with checking in or and I'm not just trying to talk about what I do but I'm just saying these are things that anyone can do just a small moment of your day just to do something to make you know either the I don't, I don't know that sounds really big for you to say to make the world a better place but I mean it's true I mean just one little person that you help is honest my um my pastor my childhood pastor um in East Austin uh St. James Reverend McClendon said uh he would close it out all the time but it's just nice to be nice and I wow. but I, I always I always try to at least consider that you yeah. don't need it. It's just nice to be nice. It's just nice to be nice. Yeah, I like that. I'm mm. gonna steal that. Do I gotta yeah. him? <laughs> so and we have to put in put us uh, my source. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, just put it down at the Reverend McClendon. Yeah. Reverend McClendon, you said. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you so much. Can I call you Devonte? Yes, ma'am. Perfectly fine. Okay, I wasn't sure. Um, thank you so much for this. Um, it's a conversation that needs to continue. Um, of course, you know, we only have a short amount of time. And I didn't I normally write questions, but I didn't on purpose. I took Donnie's um kind of his uh the way he does thank things. you, Devante. We gotta stay in touch, especially since you are a lover of live music. I am a lover of live music. I um work with a lot of bands, like it's my really? thing. Really? Okay, yeah, ma'am. We gotta we gonna have to chop it up about that. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, and if you never need anything from me, I'm always here. Thank you, Donnie. He says great show. Thank you both. Uh great topic, and thank you so much for what you're doing. And I do hope to see you doing continuing to do this because it's important um for you to talk about it. And then you're a, a, a young man that's talking about it, which makes it just really awesome for you're a great example uh to maybe get other men to talk you know appreciate that now it's an honor to be on here you awesome host thank uh, you thank you 
know, the connection. Appreciate y'all for reaching out to me. It's been a blessing. Thank you so much. And don't think we're not going to reach out to you again. Right, Donnie? Oh. <laughs> okay. My number now. <laughs> All right. Well, you take care of those babies and cherish every moment. All right. Yes, ma'am. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you all for making the choice to click in and chat with Trina. Make sure that you go to youtube.com slash chat with Trina. And what do y'all need to do? You need to subscribe and you need to click the little bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Bye, Devontae. Thank you. Bye, Miss Trina. You have a good one. Thank you. You too. Thank you again, Devontae, for joining me tonight for this awesome dialogue. It was really fun talking to you. And you are such an example of a great young man. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, remember, it is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, but every month should be Prevention and Awareness Month. Reach out and check in on your friends and family. Thank you for making the choice to click in and chat with Trina. And remember, go to YouTube.com slash chat with Trina. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. And then hit the little bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video.